Uh, let's go to the news of the weekend, college basketball wise. Indiana star freshman Mackenzie Mbako was arrested at a Taco Bell and is charged with two misdemeanors right now. Uh, the the details being reported on this are somewhat, I don't want to say flaky, but I, I don't think there's too too many specifics being reported publicly on what have happened here. Uh, you and I have heard rumors from people we trust on this. The rumor is essentially he wouldn't leave a Taco Bell. He's at a Taco Bell mm-hmm. parking lot and uh, the police are called. He, he was causing a scene and whatever you want to take that as for the workers at Taco Bell. He's in his car. He wouldn't leave the parking lot. The cops tell him drive away that there's your get out of jail free card. Drive away. You're done. He drives away. He comes back and parks in a different place. <laughs> and then <laughs> Then they had to break into the car and cuff him and arrest him. So this became way worse because he wouldn't just drive away when asked. Uh, and now, look, man, the season is like right around the corner. We're days from Indiana basketball games and their star freshman, star small forward, starting maybe leading scorer on this team, Mackenzie Mbako, just has two misdemeanor charges for not leaving a Taco Bell. What does this say to you about Mackenzie Mbako and uh, how does it affect Indiana basketball? Yeah, nothing, nothing good ever happens the midnight after midnight, the famous coaching phrase that is said throughout the world. Uh, <laughs> it's I'm not laughing at the situation because it is a serious situation, but it's just like, come on, man. Like they give you they give you a check. They gave him a get out of jail free card, for lack of a better term, and asked him to go away. And he didn't want to do it. Um, it's so close to the season. It's just something that you don't want to have for a, a freshman that you have so much promise for, I believe, too. And hopefully this is like a blip in the radar type thing. But unfortunately, when you look at a history of like college freshmen who had these issues early on, it's usually not a blip in the radar type thing. It's a maybe a start of something that I think coaches, coaching staff, and maybe just in Kenzie and Baco himself need to have a deep look within and make sure that they're making the right decisions. Uh, but hopefully it's just a one-off situation, but it's, it's just a bad look. I mean, uh, not to recruit, not to tie it back to recruiting, but Friday, you lose a guy in Boogie Flan that you thought you were gonna get. Saturday, your star freshman is getting arrested. Like it's just, it's it's a bad, bad string of events. Last thing I'll say on this though is that any restaurants or anything in East Lansing, if Xavier Booker comes in there at two a.m., I don't give a damn what's going on. You fire up that stove, you drop those fries. And you fire up that McDouble and you give our young king his meal and send him on his way. That Bloomington Taco Bell needs to be held accountable. I agree with you there. This uh, this story is equal parts hilarious and also like not hilarious at all to me. The hilarious part is like, okay, Taco Bell, so funny. Like get this man an NIL deal with Taco Bell expeditiously. Live Moss <laughs> all over Bloomington. It's incredible. Um, like I, at its core, this is a non-story. Like, okay, college kid wouldn't leave a Taco Bell. Nothing violent happened here. Nothing horrible happened. Like, it's not a serious crime, right? It is a crime. It's not a serious crime. Uh, At the same time, I don't think we should, like, totally laugh at this and make light of it and gloss it over because, like, I think it says something about how he's wired if, like, You can't, whatever state you're in, I don't know what you're under the influence of, or if you're under the influence of nothing, I have no idea. But if you're Mackenzie Mbako and the season starts in 10 days and you are given a chance in a situation where the police have been called to remove you from something and the police look you in the eyes and say, just go home and you won't just go home. Yeah, that decision making. Like that's something. It is something, even if you want to make light of it and say it's not like, that that would really scare me uh, on behalf of McKenzie, but also just on behalf of like, where could this go Indiana wise? Um, so I don't know. I mean, we've said like, we expect Indiana to be one of the craziest locker rooms in the big 10, if not in the country. Uh, we have some questions on the way certain guys are wired as far as the the stars of this team. There's a lot of rumors on how Kalel Ware is mentally, emotionally. Now you have McKenzie and Baco and his stuff. you can go down the list. There's other names that people are kind of like, I don't know. Like I, the the floor for Indiana basketball should be low for a lot of reasons that include non-basketball reasons is all I would say to this. So 
Uh, Liv Moss, though. I mean, what do you think his Taco Bell order was? Uh, he definitely was getting the nacho fries because those just came back. So I know he was for sure getting the nacho fries. He strikes me as a Locos Tacos guy too. Mm. Yeah, maybe a chalupa, maybe a chalupa, just to add a little, little spite, little something out of the ordinary to the end. Would really like to know what his order was. Also, I'm dead ass serious. Shame on that Bloomington Taco Bell. But don't like, you just, think like you know how like McDonald's had like the Travis Scott meal? Like, can we? Yeah. Can we just get the Mbaco Taco? Like <laughs> that would. Oh, be wow, so I didn't. Good. I, the, the wow, they need they do need to do that literally. Just like if you if Bloomington opened up, get, come get the Embaco taco bucket, like he would sell or, or or every game that Mackenzie Embaco scores over 15 points, your ticket to the game gets you one free taco at Taco Bell. That like, would that, definitely be so that'd be great. Yeah, a lot of opportunities here. Uh, also, j- I want to just put some respect on the move of being asked to leave politely and saying, okay, like I'll leave. And then just returning. <laughs> I love that. I absolutely love that move. Like, what do you mean? Like I, I'm in a different spot now. It's not a problem. Um, in all seriousness, we hope the best for Mackenzie Abaco. I do want to see this Indiana team at full strength. And uh, that requires their players to not get two misdemeanor charges in the Taco Bell parking lot four days before the season. So uh, I wish everybody involved on that team and that program good health, good decision-making. Let's see them play as a full squad at least once this season. That's my goal for Indiana basketball. I want to do a secret scrimmage rundown, Cart. Uh, with this is secret scrimmage time of year, one of the best times of the year before actual games get here. We get a lot of reports that aren't really reports and rumblings that you, you don't know how accurate they are because teams want to lock the doors and not let the public know what happened in some of their preseason scrimmages, but we have a list of secret scrimmages. So a couple of things, shout out to the field of 68 daily shout out to Mike Miller, who runs the field of 68 daily. He compiled a lot of these in the field of 68 daily today, which is a newsletter that goes out on a daily basis. You're definitely going to want to subscribe to that during the college basketball season. And uh, also shout out to Jeff Goodman, Trilly Donovan, everybody else who was reporting secret scrimmage results. That's where we compiled this list. Can I go like, just speed mode here. I want to give you everything that I've seen from a secret scrimmage in the last seven days in order right now. All right, do it. Tulsa beat LSU 83 to 82. TCU beat Alabama 85 to 81. Alabama freshman Sam Walter, 29 points. Jameer Nelson Jr., though, for TCU, 25 and 6. Houston beat Ole Miss 70 to 66. Colorado beat Texas, although Caden Shedrick did not play. KJ Simpson. 21, 6, and 6. North Carolina destroyed Florida Atlantic, although Elijah Martin did not play. Creighton beat Iowa State by three. Shireman, Kalkbrenner, Trey Alexander all scored double figures, as did Farabello for Creighton. VCU beat South Carolina 79 to 77. Max Shulga hit a buzzer beater. Florida beat Miami in a close game. No final score reported. Riley Kugel had 20 points, nine rebounds. Nigel Pack with 27 for Miami. Wisconsin beat Northern Iowa in two of three periods that they played. A.J. Storr led all scores with 18 points. Arizona State beat San Diego State 72-68. to San Diego State shot four for 22 from three, losing to Frankie Collins and the boys. Colorado State beat Minnesota 87-49. to the Golden Gophers took the L. Isaiah Stevens had 15 and 6. Georgia beat NC State 80 to 72. SMU beat Kansas State 86 to 76. Zurich Phelps had 23 and 7. And Iowa beat Wichita State, quote, by 15. That's all the, the information that came out on Iowa. Uh, we also have three hashtag not a secret scrimmage results from exhibition scrimmages. Arizona yes. beat Lewis and Clark 110 to 70. Lewis and Clark, Arizona. Caleb Love, 23 points and seven assists in 24 minutes. Uh, Walsh College, a Division II school, beat Oakland 75 to 69. Shout out Rocket Watts. And then uh, the Illini beat Ottawa 116 to 65. Terrence Shannon led all scores with 18. We're going to talk more about that one later. That's every secret scrimmage and three not secret scrimmages that I have results for. Uh, my question to you is Does any of this matter? Yes, it does. This is that this is what irks me because a lot I would say the majority of people always want to say that secret scrimmages, all that doesn't matter. And yes, I'll hear you out on those points. A lot of these secret scrimmages, it's a lot of like very vanilla, bland things. Say what you want to say. You don't want to show certain things to other teams. 
coaches can control the environment. So certain things are ran, certain situations are presented. I get all that. It's still hoop. It's still five guys on your team playing five guys from another team. Granted, some of those players might be out, but who cares? It's still your team playing the other team. And some of these teams are beating other teams, and that means something. Like Colorado State smoking Minnesota means something. Like that, that's, a, that's a real thing. That's why we always think so bad about Minnesota. Um, now, granted, guys might play better, guys might play worse, but it's a pretty good indication. Like if we're, if we're taking – opening night react overreactions or reactions to games. I think we should be able to take secret secret scrimmage reactions and things like that. So I personally, they carry weight for me. Um, and I know that's probably not a popular opinion, but I do look at these things and I think, Oh, maybe this guy could be more of a contributor than he was in the past season or damn, this guy didn't show up or this guy didn't play as well as I thought he would play. Uh, this can all change with more games happening, but I do think that, it needs to carry, it needs to hold a little more weight than people lead it on to carry. I want more secrets in college basketball. I like the concept <laughs> of like, like I like reports that we have no idea the accuracy of. I like that. I, I think we could do more of that. We could take that element and apply it to other things throughout the season. Uh, but yeah, I also love overreacting. That's not a surprise to anybody who listens to this program. Uh, it's not fun to not overreact. That's not fun at all. It might be like proper reporting, but uh, we aren't out here to break news. We're out here to react to news, and it's way more fun to overreact than it is to underreact. I'll always keep it honest. When there's things I don't think are that important, I won't uh, play it up just for the camera, but that's the way I enjoy watching college basketball. Like If I find out that Caleb Love had 23 and 7 assists in 24 minutes, I'm going to freak out about that and be like, what could have been? That should have been my shooting guard. I'm devastated by that. Uh, this kid, Sam Walter from Alabama, like 29 points. He wasn't even on my radar. And all of a sudden here he is like bursting onto the scene. Um, there's a couple other things that really matter. Like I've been driving the Riley Kugel hype train. He had 20 and nine. That looks fantastic. I'm starting to think Wisconsin might be better than I think. Cause if AJ store is actually their leading scorer, I'm kind of buying that. Like, there's just a lot you can pull out of this that I think does matter. Um, Florida Atlantic, we talked like, are they really a top 10 team in the country? No, they got destroyed by North Carolina, although they didn't have their best player. But uh, I'm in for reacting to all of this. I think there's a lot of interesting outputs from this. What uh, of everything I said, what jumps out? Is there like one thing that is really notable to you? Mm, uh, just secret scrimmages or exhibitions too? You can do either. Okay. I know we're going to touch on it later, and I have a longer point on it, but the mask for me. Uh -huh. for save, it, save it, save it, save it, save okay. it. Okay, I'll yeah. save it. But outside outside of that, R.J. Davis was UNC's best player, and I think I'm kind of buying into the idea of him being their best player. Okay. I am scared that Creighton only beat Iowa State by three. That's our, our team, our quote-unquote Creighton podcast team this year. Mm -hmm. I would have liked a 13-point win in that game. If uh, if everybody's in double digits and we only win that game by three, I'm a little nervous because we don't want to attach ourselves to a sinking ship cart. And uh, it, I expect better from, from my – they, at, least they, at least they won. You're getting greedy. Also, Arizona State. I mean, shout out my boy Frankie Collins. We're just going to beat a Final Four team? Day one of the season. Uh, That's what we're uh, Darion, Darion Trammell did not play. I don't know if there's anybody – oh, it, does that mean we should have beat them by more then? Because don't you – you would think Trammell hurts San Diego State, don't you? Eli made me say that. Okay. Uh, I, I, sent him, I sent him the tweet right away. I don't know if there's anybody I'm rooting for more in the country than uh, Frankie Collins, by the way. I love that guy. You miss him? Not really because Doug's great. Um, uh, <laughs> but I just – I love Frankie. I think he's a good player. Uh, okay, that's your secret scrimmage update. Hopefully we'll get more of those this week. Uh, Michigan State's secret scrimmaging on national television, aren't they? Yeah, they uh, they will be playing an exhibition. That will be on Big Ten Network for all the folks out there. They'll be playing the Tennessee Volunteers. Is that still a secret scrimmage then, or is that just a scrimmage? It's a, a, a charity exhibition. Okay, so there's a difference. It's secret scrimmage or charity exhibition. That's pretty much all. Yes, it. or just exhibition. Or just exhibition. I still want yes. more secrets. I really want more secrets. Yeah, okay. the the secret scrimmage thing is funny though, because like, couldn't like, if we wanted to, couldn't we just hop on Sleeper's burner account and just send out a fake box score? Yeah. Yes. I 
honestly really would like to get into the world of we're just a secret scrimmage account. <laughs> I think that would be pretty fun. Yeah, like I like I loved it last year when uh, Drew sent us their box score. So like we got to post the stats. Yeah, yeah, maybe something for next year with us as yeah. a secret scrimmage show. Uh, okay, all right, good job, everyone involved with secret scrimmages.